Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you a different and safer way to work with IDs in .NET. Now, this video builds on top of the primitive obsession video that I already have out, so I highly recommend to check that video too after this video or even before if you want to, to get a bit more context as if to why we're doing things like this. If you like a lot of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe or ring the notification bell and for more training, check out nickchapsas.com. And speaking of nickchapsas.com, the first 50 of you who use code OPEN15 on my course's website will get 15% off on any of the offerings. So if you want to buy something with a discount, now is the time. So let me show you what I have here. So I have a simple API here and I have a few controllers, a few models, and then a few services. Now I have a basket controller, which allows me to get a basket by user ID. Then I have an orders controller, which allows me to create an order based on a given basket ID. So let's say someone has five items in the basket. I can make an order out of that. And then we have also an endpoint to get an order by ID. Now, if I go ahead and I run this just to show you how it all ties together, I am using an in-memory uh, list here as my database. It's more of an in-memory cache. And if I go into Postman and call that endpoint, you can see that I can get my basket. So basket ID is here, user ID, and then products in the basket. And I can create an order out of that basket ID. And as you can see, bunch of IDs here. The objects are intentionally incomplete. I'm focusing on the ID aspect. So as you can see, we have quite a few different models and we're using a GUID to represent the unique identifier for each individual entity. Now, GUIDs are very convenient because you don't have to check the database to see if it already exists. The chance of that being a thing are astronomically impossible. For that reason, it's very commonly agreed that we are using globally unique identifiers in .NET, so we don't have to check a database beforehand to make sure that an ID exists before we insert it with that ID. Now, here's where the problem lies. If I go into the order service, you can see that this create from basket method has a basket ID, has an order with a user ID and a basket ID, and then the order itself also has another ID here. So bunch of IDs all represented by this same struct, which is the good. Now, this is fine. However, nothing stops me from going here and accidentally using the basket ID and I assign it to a user ID. I have encountered bugs like this in my project in the past. And yes, this project also had unit tests because whoever wrote that unit test also did that mistake. Not only is this unsafe, but it is also a form of primitive obsession because we're using the GUID primitive to represent a domain concern, in this case, the order ID or the user ID or the basket ID. These things can still be represented as a GUID, both on the API layer and the database layer, but in the main domain layer of my application, it's way safer to represent them with unique objects. Same way that you would create an object to represent a card number and you wouldn't use a string or a postcode or a zip code and you wouldn't use a string again. So it's the same form of primitive obsession, but taken a step further. Now we could go ahead and create our own structs to represent the order ID, the basket ID, and so on and so forth. But we don't have to because Andrew Locke has created a package called strongly typed ID. Now in the description, I'm going to put a link to the series about this new package that he has written. And you can check that even further if you want at your spare time. Now, if at any point what you see here you think is cool, I highly recommend you click the link in the description, you go to the project on GitHub and you give it a star because open source developers can use all the GitHub stars they can get for the projects. It really, really motivates us. Now, if I go ahead and I type strongly typed ID, as you can see here, I have this new Git package. I'm going to go ahead and add the 1.0.0 beta version, which works with source generators. So now if I go, let's say in the order object over here, what I can do is I can create a public partial struct called order ID. And now this is the object I'm going to use to represent the order ID instead of using a good. And what I have to do for that struct to be generated is I have to say strongly typed ID here. And because by default, strongly typed ID will use JSON.NET and it's not a NuGet package that is automatically imported in the project, uh, you can change the converter to use the system.json. Uh, so we can do this, system text.json. You can have multiple ones as well by using the pipe and having another one 
to if you want to, but we don't need to. Now with that build, you can also see that the color changed here. If I press F12 to go to the definition, you can see what the source generator has created. And this is a completely new struct with a JSON serializer. So that thing can actually be converted to JSON if needed. And also a bunch of other overrides to override the equality checks, reference equals, a bunch of other stuff like this to make sure that when you compare two different order IDs, their actual values are compared, not the references. So what I can do now is I can replace this GUID over here with the order ID and I can replace this GUID.new GUID with the order ID.new, which will do the same thing behind the scenes. These things are backed by GUIDs too. If I go in here, you can see that it's using a GUID. However, this is also overreadable. I can go here and I can say backing type and I can specify a GUID and int along a string or a nullable string as the backing type for this object. I don't need to because I want to use GUIDs. So this is enough for that. Now, obviously our code is no longer compiling over here because we're not using an order ID everywhere now. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do. We're going to change this to order ID and this now works. However, my controller will object and I can go here and I can say that this is now a new order ID. And because this is a struct, you don't have to worry about the allocation. The good is a struct. The struct is a struct. This is still a stack allocation in that context. And now I can simply build this. Now you can technically use it here as well. However, I would advise against it because this is your API layer. The API layer doesn't really need to know much about your domain level concerns once the request is handled. You're going to get that API contract, map it to whatever makes sense in your domain and then proceed from there. So with that out of the way, you would go ahead and do the same thing for every other type that you have in your domain. So the basket is next. You would change that to this um, and this should be enough to have a basket ID. Here we go. And now this is represented like this and you can say basket dot and this is basket ID. So basket ID dot new. And of course this will break other things, but we're going to go ahead and fix them. So basket ID here, we're going to go in the order and we're going to change that basket ID to be a basket ID too. Here we go. And now if someone accidentally tries to use the user ID, it just won't work. You won't be allowed. We detect that this is not what it should be. And the compiler will go, Bruh, I should, I don't know what to do with this. And the basket ID here should also be changed. So basket ID. And here we go. Way, way safer now. Of course, you're going to have to do the new basket ID here again and pass the basket ID down. But now your code is way, way safer. Now you can see that I'm using an order ID here. And actually, if I go ahead and get the order itself, the order object is using the order ID and the basket ID. If I go ahead and run this, and by the way, you would do the same for the user and the same for the product. I'm just not showing that because I'm trying to save some time. Now with those things changed, if I go here and I get the new uh, basket ID and I create a new order here, Watch what I get back. I still get the GUID as a GUID, exactly as I had it before. Nothing really changed because the struct has an implementation on how it should be serialized because we're passing down, if you remember, that header over here, which in the context of the actual implementation will add a JSON converter exactly as we want it. If you're using JSON.NET, you can just change that to use Newtonsoft JSON and that would do the same for you. It's so, so simple. And this is using source generators and you can really ensure that no surprises will happen when you're using the different IDs. It is a very nice approach, especially if you're working more in the DDD space and I highly recommend it. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find a link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.